it is really cool how blasters turn out when you paint them up in the zombie strike paint scheme. Really like it, big fan of it. In today's video, we are looking at this build. This is a demolisher that has had a lot of modification done to it. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the stuff I did with this, talk about the history of this blaster for me, and do some range and accuracy tests, and just give my final impressions of this build. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Now the Zombie Strike Demolisher build that I've been working on has been a project that I actually started before I started this YouTube channel. This is one of the first mods that I ever did. And it all started because I found a 3D printed part on Thingiverse that basically was able to delete this bottom section. And then after I was all done, I had a Demolisher rocket with a pump and instead of throwing it away, I figured, you know what, let's just see if we can attach it to like a barrel or something and use it in other builds. And for a long time, this thing just kind of resided on one of my recons. And this is pretty much how I ran this thing for a long time. It wasn't until recently I decided I wanted to come back to this and give it an overhaul. So that's what I did. So let's go ahead and run down all the cool stuff about this. Obviously we have a detachable demolisher rocket launcher. So let's put that aside. And then when we're not using the demolisher, I, I just felt like this is a little bit short and needed a little kind of look to it. So. I went ahead and painted this up for the zombie strike look. This side up here was actually off of that small Fortnite blaster. I just thought it looked good because it's kind of a reflex site. I just felt like that kind of tied the look together. This obviously is one of the, the coolest things about this in my opinion, and, and this is a storage stock, which Nerf has actually created, and I pretty much rewired it to be a battery stock. As you can see here, this now can be reused for other applications because we have a uh, double XD60 connections here. So that's all ready to go and you can throw this on other stuff as a bot battery stock. Another feature of this blaster is we have a battery display marker here with a on off switch. And that just controls this little panel here. So you can basically, you know, turn it on, see what your batteries are at and then shut it off or just leave it run because it does look pretty cool to be lit up. Inside here, it is a full auto system and this is actually built out on 2S because I did keep the old pusher motor and I don't believe I can pump 3S through that. In addition, this is a 3D printed solution in here for a full auto and I simply don't want to push the uh, the prints to their maximum levels with, you know, like a really high high powered 3S build. So that also brings up a good point about this build. This is mainly to be used at like a kind of lower FPS type of battles. I did do some chronograph readings and this thing was hitting around 120, which is fine. I think that's pretty much cap for uh, a lot of HVZs. Typically they like to see it around 100 to 120. So this definitely could be used in, in most events. And that was the purpose of this build. So the current build is perfect for what it's intended for. And that is more for HVZ. This right here is kind of a custom grip that I designed back when I did the behemoth. And it, I just felt like it was pretty much completed this look. So I threw it on here. After getting this thing put together, I took it outside and did some range shots with it. And I shot targets up to 30 feet and it was pretty effective. I was shooting men guns, which are kind of a, a curved inward waffle tip because of the normal Adventure Force waffles actually had a little trouble in here. I believe that's because I'm running a pretty high, a higher crush cage in here. This is a 42 millimeter cage. So it's a little bit of a high crush for a full auto system. But I found that the men guns actually seem to be working fine. Also standard elite shot through here pretty easily too. This demolisher right here, I've been working on for a long time. In fact, I started this before I even started my YouTube channel with this thing right here. I've always really liked the idea of having a modular demolisher rocket launcher. So in this mod, I chopped it off and used a lot of, uh, this is plastic poster card, which I pretty much cut little pieces and glued them on. And that way you can still take this thing apart and work on it. And it kind of made a pretty clean integration. This is before I really started doing much with putty. So I think with that considered, it turned out pretty good. Now, as we can see here, the demolisher 
utilizes a 3D printed little part down here to kind of clean up this bottom. I'll go ahead and provide a link for all this if I can find it, or I can provide the link for the alternative solution. This right here is a basically a full auto kind of 3D printed part. I've actually tweaked it a lot and cut pieces off and kind of changed it. When you put these things in, you're gonna have to do a lot of shell cutting. For this build, I also wanted to include a volt, kind of like a voltmeter or a battery battery board just to see the status of the battery and then an on off switch so I can turn this thing off. I don't have to have it running all the time. So let's kind of go over the wiring. Now, as you can see, I am coming out the back for the battery and I've created a battery stock out of the modulus storage stock. It works really well to hold a battery. So essentially I just kind of run a cord all the way through it. There is a stopper in there, which you can see right here. What the stopper does is basically you can't pull the cord all the way through. You know, it'll, it'll basically just stop it from going all the way through, which is good. So you can plug this in, pull it all, all the way out, kind of tighten this all up before you put the stock on and you're good to go. And there's plenty of room in here to hold the 2S LiPo, which I am primarily using on this build. The current wiring that I did on this is essentially a three switch rapid strike. So we have our return switch here, which indicates basically when this thing is in its fully closed position, it, it can detect that. And what this does is it has more controlled rate of fire. So essentially it's easier to pop off one or two shots with this type of system. Down here we have the rev, rev trigger. I believe there is still motor braking in here. However, I did retain the mechanical trigger lock. So you have to be revving to fire the trigger. Here's the trigger switch. So this system right here is essentially a three switch rapid strike system. And I'll go ahead and post up a wiring schematic for that. It's pretty straightforward. A little bit hard to describe this in here just because of the complexity of how tight the wires in it are and everything. It looks a little overwhelming, but it's actually not if you just follow the wiring diagram. So, but that's pretty much all that's going on in here. And let's go ahead and fire it up. So we have a rev here for the flywheels. And then we have the trigger. Looks like I am getting a little bit of runaway, but that's fine. As soon as you let off the rev trigger, it stops the firing. And because of this return switch here, this, this pusher doesn't stay out here, just kind of dangling out there. So that's really good. So after putting this thing all together, I'm very happy with it, like I said. When I took this thing outside, uh, the one thing that's worth mentioning is that the demolisher rocket launcher is not that impressive. In fact, I could barely, I couldn't even make a tag at 30 feet. So these things are, I don't know, I think I'm gonna spend some time on trying to work with maybe a better rocket or something, because these things are just, it's not, what's the point? You might as well throw a sock or just do a throwable. It's almost better just to throw a demolisher rocket than to launch it out of something like this. So I think I'll revisit that and see what we can find. But uh, other than that, I mean, it looks cool, super awesome. Overall, my final impressions of this blaster, I'm very happy with it. I'm a huge fan of just the overall look of the Demolisher. It's just a really cool looking blaster to me. I like it more than the Strife. I did actually see a Strife kit that turns it into more of a Demolisher look and I'm actually half tempted to, to do that as a build, just because I'm a big fan of how the Demolisher looks. Well, I'm Dr. Flux and that pretty much wraps up this video of the Demolisher Zombie Strike build. Let me know in the comment section if you if you like this build. Is this something you would like to try? There is definitely a lot of things going on here and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I wanna thank you for spending some time with me today and checking out this video. If you have not done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy foam flinging.